Welcome back. Happy Friday. If you can't tell, Robin and I are no longer in Maine. We're here to attempt the Oregon Traverse. We came three years ago and we checked it out when Robin and I first started dating. And it's been something we wanted to come back for. And she really wanted to do it before she turned 40, which is at the end of this month. So here we are. We've got four weeks. We are staying in this lovely little Airbnb here and we're gonna be trying to, to figure out and see if we can do this traverse. So the next couple weeks are gonna be a little bit different with the videos because of that. So next week, next week's video <clears throat> is gonna be really short. We're just gonna do a little update from the organs and then the following week will be a much longer video, us going to the library and hunting down the first ascensionist and trying to figure out this super crazy complex route that we want to do. Uh, and then we'll probably do another little short update the following week and then another video. So we feel like that's kind of the best of both worlds for you guys and for us. And then we'll be back in November to the boat and we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program. So can't wait to take you into the Alpine desert. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing. <laughs> it has been a day. I got up this morning and finished stuff up on the bowsprit. And as I was hand lining the boat, the tender around back to the side of the floating dock, I looked down at the prop and realized that the anode on the end of it was gone, like gone, gone and that's really exceedingly fast. So we should get at the very least a year out of an anode. Uh, and the fact that this one went from brand new to completely dissolved and totally gone this quickly is really, really concerning. It means that there's, there's a big problem. So if the anode disappears really quickly, there are just a handful of things that can cause it. So one can be stray electrical current in the water. So if we're tied up to a dock or we're in a really tight marina and the boat next to us is leaking current or more likely the alternating current system for the electricity for the dock is leaking somewhere, it can cause that and the anode can get consumed uh, pretty quickly. But since we've launched Arabella, we haven't been tied to docks. We've been predominantly at moorings and at anchorages. So that pretty much rules that one out. So then the next big one would be stray electrical current coming from the boat itself. So how that happens is uh, from the DC, the direct current, or the AC, the alternating current, has a leak somewhere that's leaking into the structure of the boat, into the bilge water, into the prop shaft, into the bronze floors, somewhere. And that is causing some galvanic corrosion, which is eating up that zinc. Now, if we were to just leave it and do nothing, what would happen is now that the zinc's gone, it's gonna start eating something else. So through hulls, fasteners, prop shaft, rudder hardware, all of those are things that we might start having galvanic issues with next, which as you can imagine would be really bad. If it was a through haul or plank fasteners, I mean, it could theoretically lead to the boat sinking in kind of a scary short amount of time. So this is something that we really got to get fixed. When I realized that the anode was gone and we got to figure out where this stray current is coming from, I grabbed Nigel Calder's book off the shelf and Calder's got a whole section here on testing for ground leaks and troubleshooting that. So I read through what Calder had to say and I gave a call to Satchel who helped you know build all the system and knows a lot about this. And I also called Madison who has a boat and has been doing a lot of electrical stuff and picked her brain as well. And I'm gonna try in the simplest terms here to to explain what Nigel's process here is and really what the process for hunting down a leak like this, whether it be on a boat or a house or a car, it's kind of more or less the same process. We haven't been at a dock really, so I don't think it's stray current coming from somewhere around us. It's likely stray current coming from the boat. So that could be from our DC system or our AC system and AC is pretty likely, and some cross-contamination between AC-DC is also pretty likely. 
except in the fact that AC system on Arabella is microscopic. Uh, it's the inverter here, which is our inverter charger. And the wires go from this all the way to here. <laughs> and then this is all we have for an AC panel. So we have our, our main breaker, our distribution breaker, and one outlet. And we only turn the inverter on, and we only turn any of this on when we're using the AC, which is very, very infrequently. So it can't really be the AC system because we don't really use it, and it's so small and so simple and so high up in the boat that the chances of that are, are really, really slim. So what we're looking at is our DC system. So I am no artist by any means, as anyone who's followed knows, but I threw together a couple quick drawings here. So essentially, in our simplest system, you've got a battery with a positive and a negative, and those run over, and they provide the power to your light, your pump, whatever. Now in the boat, you know, there's, there's a little bit of water in the bilge. Things are kind of wet down there. It's a wooden boat. That's how that goes. We've got bronze floors. You know, we've got an engine. We've got a prop shaft. We've got some wet wood. And what happens is if you were to damage one of these wires or one of these connections, and they're making contact with the wet wood, the prop shaft, the engine, the bronze floors, or most likely the bilge water, what ends up happening is that pulls current and you get a leak. And that current leaks out of these wires and into the water or into the engine. And it tries to find a way to get out of the boat. So oftentimes that is through the prop shaft to the prop. And that's why you have an anode on the prop. So that when that stray current, even just tiny little bits of natural current, um, come through, they end up eating that anode and they don't eat your prop or your shaft or anything else important. Now obviously the system on Arabella is a bit more complicated than one battery going to one item, but this is basically the issue that we are trying to find, is where there is a bad connection, a damaged wire, something like that that is leaking that current into the boat. And it's not enough current to cause a short, so it's not blowing a fuse, it's not popping a breaker, um, but it's just enough to, to be leaking out and, and not cause anything to pop here. So if we look at this system here, so we have our battery. Our battery leads to our breaker panel and our breaker panel distributes everything. And this looks kind of crazy, but I'm just trying to make a simple point here. Is on the breaker, you have a whole bunch of different switches. And if you do one pump off one switch, you've got one wire going and you got one wire back. So when you throw this breaker, it shuts off the energy to these two wires into this pump. Now, if you say take all of the lights in the boat and run them back to one breaker. When we go through the troubleshooting and the diagnostics, we use a meter here, which can measure all sorts of stuff, but we're measuring milliamps and amps. So we are going to measure the amps on each of these circuits, and we're going to see if there's a stray current coming off the pump or if there's a stray current coming off the lights, or the fridge, or the charging plugs, or whatnot. Now, as we go through these diagnostics, if we find out that it's the pump, and there's one wire going and one wire back, chasing this down and figuring out where in that is the issue is pretty simple. Now, if we take all of the lights, and we run them back to one breaker, and we discover that the light system is our issue, now we have to go through and isolate every single one of these circuits and these extensions to try to figure out where in this network of wiring that's happening. So on Arabella, if we look, we have a tremendous number of breakers. You could call it a kind of excessive number of breakers. 
but what this does is it's going to let us, as we go through these diagnostics, narrow things down much quicker. So we have one breaker that's just the anchor washdown pump, just the discharge pump. Every single pump is on its own. These ones that are all unlabeled and off, this is a whole bank of just extra ones. So if things get added to the boat down the road, we don't have to tie into an existing breaker. We can give it its own. These here are all also extra breakers. Um, and as you go through our lighting and our USBs, they're broken down into sections. So we have uh, the nav table USBs. We have lights in the four peak. We have the forward saloon. We have lights in the galley. We have lights in the aft part of the saloon. We've got lights in the head. And we've got the charging ports in the settee. So as we go through these diagnostics, we're going to be able to figure out really quickly, hopefully, where that leak is coming from. So this is where I have spent most of my day. It's very cozy. And if you can come back here and join me. So this is our Lynx system for power in. And all this is is battery one, two, three, and four, positive. Battery one, two, three, and four, negative. That whole thing is basically just like a massive bus bar. That gets connected to the link shunt. And what the link shunt does is that reads what's going on in the batteries. Power in, power out, level charge. Uh, it's doing that through a couple different gadgets. And then the next thing in this line is the link's distribution. And that's where it starts to branch off. So we've got a heavy line here that runs out to the alternator. We've got a negative bus extension for other negative things that need to be tied in. Now in that diagram that Nigel has, and in that you know kind of hokey drawing that I did, we have a battery with a positive and a negative. Now if you look here, there's no battery terminal with a positive and negative to put our read on. So how we end up kind of creating that is by taking this big fuse out here. So this fuse connects the positive sides of our batteries, which all join here, and our readout for the link shunt and our distribution. So if we take this fuse out, we break the power coming from our battery power in to our distribution, and then we create that break in the system where we can put our multimeter and read how much current is coming across that gap. Now, before we take this out, there's a few really important things that need to happen. Uh, and that is that we need to shut off everything in the boat that we can possibly shut off. Because if the boat's drawing a bunch of power and we go to try to take this out, it's gonna be real sparky sparky. And the more power that that's pulling, the more sparky sparky it's gonna be. And we really don't want that. Um, the lithium iron batteries can discharge a tremendous amount. So if we were to take a wrench and join positive to negative here, we might do some uh, arc welding, we might do some vaporizing of metal, we might do some electrocution. Uh, so we got to be real careful during this whole process not to join the positive and negative sides of these, and that's why they have these really nice housings that go on them. So let's go through and shut off everything in the boat, which is a little more complicated than you might think. And then the diagnostics can really begin. So with everything on here, the first thing that we want to do is go through the boat and shut everything off. Because as we go through this process, we're going to end up turning these on one by one and seeing if they're drawing power. And if they're providing power to something that's seeking power, then it's going to show us that something's running. And what we want to know is if there's a stray current leak. So we need to shut the lights off. And then the USB charging ports. The fans are all off. Now we can go through and just throw all the breakers. Now you notice we still have lights here. If we open this bad boy up, 
and go to our negative bus bar here. So we need to undo this screw and then that will cut power so that we no longer have those lights lighting up because that is gonna give us a false readout. That's gonna show us that current is being drawn. We wanna make sure that there's nothing drawing current in the boat for this. All right, so now all of that is off. We're gonna shut off our DC distribution. Multimeter, got a wrench, or go back in the hole. So this is where I need to be really careful. And it would be very wise to be working with tools that are insulated so they can't make the connection. But I don't have such tools. So we are just going to be exceedingly careful. So we're going to work on milliamps here. So we've got our setting to DC or direct current, which is what we're working in. We're going to measure in milliamps. And if we take our two probes, we are running a whole bunch of milliamps. So somewhere there's a charge in the system. And I bet you it is right here with the solar panels. So if we turn the solar panels off. All right, so something else is on and pulling because we are getting two and a half milliamps. All right, what did I miss? I missed something. I put the fridge, honey. The fridge is off. Stump. This wasn't happening earlier. <sighs> okay, let me call special. I forgot to pull the fuse for the Victron. <clears throat> so this readout goes from the shunt and it's hardwired in. So when I connected it with the multimeter, I basically gave it enough current, not to turn this thing on, but to get it to flash and come partially to life. Okay, so if you join me back in my hole again, everything's off, engine start battery's off, AC inverter's off, distribution panel is off. So at this point, the only thing that is connected are the bilge pumps because those are wired in and the fuses are in for them. So when we make the connection with the multimeter, that's going to tell us if our leak is coming from the bilge pumps or if the leach is coming from somewhere else. Because right now, the only thing that could be pulling current when we make that connection is the wires to the bilge pump because our DC distribution switch is off, which should cut power to all of this. These breakers are all also shut off. So unless one of these is malfunctioning, which is really unlikely, um, it would be the bilge pumps. And right now, I don't know if you can get back here with me or not. So we are in, you know, 0, 0.00 milliamps. And if we take our probes here and connect across from our fuse, we are reading 0 0.1 which is nothing to worry about, like at all. That's just the fact that there are wires and connections. Um, according to Nigel Calder, who's a real good authority on this, um, if we're anything under one milliamp, 
is nothing to worry about. It's an insignificant thing. It's the kind of draw that you get from, you know, LED lights or the tiny little battery brain and something, or uh, just the fact that there's wires that are that are running. Um, they're going to have a, a tiny, tiny microscopic draw. So anything under one milliamps, nothing to worry about. And right now we're at 0 0.1. So, or I'm sorry, 0 0.01. Or 0 0.00. Even better. Even better. So at this point we can be reasonably assured that the leak is not in the bilge pumps. And the bilge pumps are really the most likely place to have them because they're down, they're by the water, um, and the chances of some stray current starting down there is is really the most likely. So we're good with the bilge pumps. Now what we need to do is reach back here, turn on our distribution. So I just turned on power to all of the breakers and everything back here. And now we'll see if we have a current leak in any of that. And we want to let this reader go for a minute and settle out. So 0 0.01. So I would say that we are good to go in that. There's no leaks there. All right. So it's not in our bilge pumps. And it's not in the wiring back here going to the breaker. So now this is where the real tedious bit begins. So you go through each and every single one of all of these switches that are used. And these are next to bilge pumps are most likely, right? Our lights and USBs, because those are on pretty much all the time. There's power going through there. So with Satchel's help and Madison's help, we went through and said, got everything shut off that needed to be shut off. And that took a little bit because as you saw, I went and did it today and I went back to do it again for the video and I forgot about the servo. There's, there's a lot of little things that you got to catch. Um, but with everything off, we went through every single one of these breakers and the biggest draw that we could find was uh, 0 0.07, which anything under one is nothing to worry about. So 0 0.07 is nothing. No worries there. So what we ended up determining is that there is no current leak that we can find through any of the DC electrical system, which honestly makes sense. I mean, it's all brand new anchor wire. It's all heat shrunk. Uh, it's all covered in dielectric grease. All the junction boxes are in boxes. All the wires run through conduits and are split wrapped. I mean, the, the chances of those getting chafed or worn or something happening in this short of time are, are kind of slim. I was honestly thinking that we were gonna find some draw where something had come unplugged. You know, a bilge pump came disconnected or somebody forgot to connect it in the melee of, of launch. Um, but we meticulously spent the entire day running through all of this. We pulled every single fuse um, through all of the nav gear, through the chart plotter, through the bilge pumps, ran every circuit, every breaker, everything that me and Madison and Satchel could possibly think of on the boat to test. And we have come up completely empty handed. So as best that we can tell, there is no DC leak in the system. So that brings up a really big question of where on earth is all of this stray current coming from that in just a handful of months is totally annihilating the anode. Um, so let me put all of this back together, get some lights on in here, and then I will reveal to you what our current hypothesis is and what we are doing to test it. Um, and I'd be very interested to hear any of your hypothesis as well. But let me put this gap together and get some lights back on because the sun's going down and filming's gonna get real tough here real quick. How's that reading? Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, nice. I think that means we're ready to put our boat back together. Oof. So where on earth 
is all of this stray current coming from? Because in a few months, it obliterated the anode. I mean, it's it's gone. Um, the fasteners are there. It didn't fall off. It it got eaten. So where is that power coming from? And our hypothesis is something to do with the engine and the alternator. The alternator is our big theory. So when we got the Nani engine, it comes with a alternator with an internal regulator so that when the battery is full, that regulator tells the alternator, cut it off, we're good, don't provide any more power. Um, or, hey, battery needs juice, come on alternator, make some power. And the issue with that is that regulator that's built into it isn't designed to work with the lithium iron battery bank that we have. So we have what's called a wake speed 500, and a wake speed is what is controlling that um, current flow. And that's telling the alternator you know, what it needs to do, when it needs to turn on. So you can't have a regulator in the alternator and have an external regulator and have them both try to work together. It doesn't work. So we had Fred from Hanson Marine come out and Fred's words, not mine, he neutered the alternator. That's, that's how he described it. That's what he told us he did. Um, so that the internal regulator was no longer functional and it would be fully run by the external regulator. Okay. And what we discovered shortly after launch is that we were running the engine and the battery bank was full and the alternator was still producing power and still trying to put it into the battery bank which is no bueno that is going to cause major issues and fry cook something pretty quick and satchel fiddled around with it a little bit and couldn't figure out how to get the alternator to stop producing power but because of the portable panels that we have laid out on deck and the two rigid panels and the brand new wiring and led lights and how efficient everything is We've actually been running the boat since right after launch without the engine alternator at all. All of our power needs, the water maker, uh, charging the Makita batteries off the inverter, everything, it's all been off the solar power. And we've had plenty of juice that hasn't been a problem. So we've just left the alternator disconnected and unhooked. The theory is that when we run the motor, the alternator is still creating some level of power probably not the 100 amps that it could create but it's probably creating uh, just enough and that's leaking into the engine and it's finding its way out through the prop shaft so our theory is that we fried that anode when the engine was running and the alternator was creating current and the alternator had no place to put it so i think the solution is to get a different alternator that doesn't have an internal regulator that is just made to be externally regulated and hook that up and see if that fixes the problem. Um, we've got a little more troubleshooting to do there. But Robin and I are leaving for New Mexico and this was a very scary thing to find right before we were leaving because if we didn't get the cause of this figured out, you know, we could come back to a rotten through hull in a sinking boat. We might get a call that Arabella sunk at the dock. Uh, and that would be horrific. We really don't want that. So I feel a lot better now knowing that there isn't a leak in the DC system. We can leave the solar panels on. We can leave the fridge plugged in and running. Um, some folks are going to come and enjoy the boat in Camden while we're away, which I think is great and use it as a little bit of a hotel. Um, so folks can come, stay, use lights. We don't have to worry. So what we've done is we've, if you look back here, the little box this little blue box here is a 12 volt to 12 volt charger so we are charging the starter battery off of the house bank so i took the positive wire running into that and disconnected it and capped it i also took the positive off of the start battery and taped that up and capped that as well so the start battery can't be leaking into the engine. The start battery is isolated from the main battery bank. Um, and the alternator is also isolated. I disconnected that. 
from the main system. So we took every component that we could of the engine, the engine battery, and the alternator, and we isolated them. And we're not running the motor for the month while we're gone anyways, so it really shouldn't be an issue unless that leak is somehow coming out of the start battery. Uh, and I can't get a prop, um, an anode for this particular prop right off the shelf. I have to order it. But I picked up a pair of anodes that are made to go on a prop shaft. So we'll see if we can get those onto the shaft before we leave. Uh, and that will protect everything while we're gone. I'll order up a new anode that fits the prop and we'll put that on as soon as we get back. But there will be a sacrificial zinc while we are gone. So I feel, I feel a lot better. It was a pretty anxious, stressful day. Um, and yeah, we're going to take off to New Mexico here and keep our fingers crossed. And I think when we get back, I'll have all of the information. I'm sure that at least one of you's got some sort of theory here, maybe some experience. Um, please share and let us know your thoughts. And uh, when I get back from New Mexico, we'll dive into this. Hopefully we'll come back in a month and the anode on the prop will be barely touched at all. And uh, that'll be a really good inclination that it is something to do with the alternator, the engine, and the start battery. And we can troubleshoot those at a little bit later date. But it's really nice to know that it's not out of the DC system, that all that fully checked out. And it was cool to do this troubleshooting where I can phone a friend. Thank you, Satchel and Madison. Um, it would have probably taken me a couple days to sift through all of this and figure it out just on my own, but being able to bounce it off between them was super helpful. So thank you guys for that. And uh, yeah, it's nice when problems happen when you can phone a friend and we're not out at sea on our own trying to troubleshoot this. I'm sure I would have figured it out. It just would have taken a lot longer.